Uh, well, I guess let's just get right into the news, I guess. We'll go down a lot. We have a lot of different stuff to go through today. And I will tell you, I do think that there is a picture that will be painted by the end of this. Because a lot of these stories, while they're, uh, while they're single and they don't necessarily have an outward connection, I think if you take a, take a look, look at the forest, instead of looking at the individual trees, I think you'll see a pattern with a lot of the stuff that we're, uh, that we're talking about today. And some other issues that, while the real issue as to why they're doing it is not apparently talked about in the papers or in the media, the real reason why, they're do- why they are doing it is. And we'll start with St. Petersburg. In case you're unaware, uh, St. Petersburg dock owners are being sued by the state of Florida over land that has huge implications. Now, this was actually done by uh, Noah Pransky, who I got to tell you, Noah's done some phenomenal reporting as of late. And, I mean, I got to give him credit. I mean, you know, as much as we complain about the mainstream media, and a lot of those complaints are actually pretty true, if you go to some of the local media and look at some of their stories that are going on, like 10 News, you know, this guy's done a lot of good stuff. The investigative reporting that's been being done by him is uh, is pretty good. So let me give you the story here. Uh, St. Petersburg dock owner sued by the state over uh, land that has huge implications. And this is from, uh, you know, Channel 10. State of Florida's filed a lawsuit against a local property owner claiming his land bought and sold in accordance with local laws since 1883 has actually belonged to the state since 1845. (laughs) The case should set uh, a monumental precedent that wouldn't just affect residents of the city, but property owners statewide. Um, So what the the state is saying there is that upon uh, the state's incorporation as a state, uh, they took possession of all waterway property. Right. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this isn't just about St. Pete. This is all over the state. They're trying to make it sound like, well, the governor is actually trying to make it sound like this is only this one particular bayou and these few docks. But it really has an implication for anyone who lives on the water anywhere in the state. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot, like you were uh, prefacing, there's a lot more to this particular issue. This is this is just an opening salvo. Well, it's not even an opening salvo. This isn't a continuation of a pattern that's been going on for a long time. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, now um, while Ware said that he has been a target of DEP questions for years on the issue, he was surprised to get the lawsuit earlier this month and expects his case to set a precedent for all other dock owners in St. Pete. So what they're doing is they're picking one so they can get the precedent so they can go get the rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but attorneys tell 10 News that the case j- doesn't just jeopardize dock owners in St. Pete. It also jeopardizes the city, county, and other municipalities. The 83 docks represent millions of dollars of real estate that would be taken off of the tax rolls. So this will actually uh, hurt local governments. It's $5 million altogether just on this one bayou. Yeah. Uh, But St. Pete also owns 12 of the docks purchased at an auction years ago. So now St. Pete actually owns some of this land too, uh, city of St. Pete. Uh, Furthermore, the court ruling that the state owns a submerged land alongside Coffee Pot Bayou could mean that the state can also claim uh, to city-owned submerged lands at the St. Pete Pier. So the pier is actually in play in this one as well. Uh, Maybe now, that could stop the lens. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or put something even worse in its place. Uh, actually, yeah, that, that could potentially, because uh, the, the state may take ownership right. of the land underneath, underneath the pier. the pier, right. Which means they take ownership of the pier. Exactly. Which means that the city, uh, the, <laughs> the city of St. Pete and the, P- the taxpayers there should have not have to pay anything then, right? Well, they'll pay it one way or another. Well, yeah. <laughs> they'll pay it to the state or they'll pay it to the city. Well, the entire state will pay for it then, so it's not just going to be a St. Pete problem. Now, Bill Foster, who's the mayor of St. Pete, who's not a very good guy, by the way, um, is not happy with this, and he's, he's, you know, he wants to make sure it gets fought. Now, the reason I bring this up, and now this was a story that was done in July um, in, in the newspaper in Channel 10. However... Noah Pransky, being the investigative journalist that he seems to be, caught up with Rick Scott. And he was trying to ask Rick Scott questions about this, and Rick Scott kept saying the same thing. So so this is a new story. 
um, uh, Governor Rick Scott doesn't want to share details on a 10 News investigation into Coffee Pot uh, Bay, Bayou lawsuit. Um, let's see here. I want to see here if they have it because I, I couldn't get the clip, which really sucked, but because 10 News does not put their stuff on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, basically, this is what he says. That's a very local land dispute, and they're going to court to resolve it. Okay. So let me ask and say it again. When asked several questions about the suit by Channel 10 News on Thursday, the governor gave three versions of the same non-answer. That's a very local land dispute, and they're going to court to resolve it. Now, you got to remember, it was Rick Scott, uh, Adam Putnam, I think, and Pam Bondi, that filed the lawsuit. Right. It's it's Rick Scott and two cabinet members. Yeah. Rick Scott, along with three members of the cabinet, filed a lawsuit last month against Rick and Kelly Ware. So they filed a lawsuit against individuals. Mm -hmm. Hey, just so you know, I can roll the audio on that story if you want. Oh, you can? Yeah. If you want to roll the audio on that story, go ahead. Yeah. Just a second here. Keep talking. And All it's right. it's funny when you when you see the cl when you hear the clip and and I don't know if you know you'll be able to really hear this over the the airwaves and things like that. But what he does is Noah Pransky asks him the question, and then he looks at him like he's going to answer, and then he starts shaking hands in the crowd like, "Let me just avoid him. Let yeah. me shake enough." If I hands. ignore him, maybe he'll go away. Yeah, maybe I'll shake enough hands to where he'll just disappear. Yeah. I was actually kind of shocked that they found enough people that wanted to shake Rick Scott's hand, but that, <laughs> I thought that was actually the more important part of the story. So, yeah, he's walking around at some event or something like that. All right. So, so you ready go ahead. Hit the audio. Yeah, I got the story. If economic concerns are getting... All right. <laughs> roll. So I guess we, we don't have the story here. We'll have it in a well, second. We yeah. have it in, what, five seconds, and then <laughs> yeah. you can skip the ad? <laughs> All right. As soon as I can skip the ad. I'll, I'll bring it up when it's ready. Now, again, Rick Scott, they're trying to set a legal precedence around this. No. We're one of. They're suing uh, over a land issue in Coffee Pop Bayou in St. Petersburg. Are you aware of the consequences that that case could have, and why did you file the suit? Hi, how are you? It goes around New Jersey. Oh, good. Yes. We live down here now. Yes, just, just shaking hands. Yes. Love yeah, you. You are so right. This is it's a great place. Nice yeah. to support. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sarasota. How great. Glad you're here. Hey, how are you doing? Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, how you doing? Thanks for the help too. We appreciate it. We'll take a talk to you. Why follow that? The, uh, well, it's, it's a local land dispute. That's what they're they're just resolving a land dispute. But there's four four plaintiffs on it. It's the trustees, you and the cabinet. Uh, are you aware of the consequences on, uh, of that case could have over submerged land all across Florida? Well, you know that look. That's a very local um, land dispute, and and they're doing you know they're going to court to resolve it. But it's 130 years privately owned. Shake, shaking more hands now. From yesterday. <laughs> Dodging the reporter. The case could overturn. How are you, sir? <laughs> Still ignoring the reporter. Beautiful horses. Appreciate it. Petting horses. <laughs> I actually think the last thing, Governor, the case could threaten to overturn <laughs> property rules. Um, you know, tens of thousands of Floridians, this precedent could affect them. What would you tell someone who's concerned about that? It's a local land, land dispute. They're going to the courts to come up with the, uh, the resolution. See y'all. Bye-bye. Okay, Rick Scott is lying to you, folks. That's a flat-out lie. Yeah, that's a lie. I mean, yeah. that's a lie. He is one of the three or one of the four that filed the lawsuit. It's not local. It's not like some guy locally is suing or some local or municipality local or municipality. government is suing. It's him that's doing it. Well, and you can tell that they just give them the talking point, and they basically just say, anyone who asks you about cross uh, coffee pot by you. Local land say, issue. It's a local land issue, and we're going to court local to resolve dispute. it. Local dispute. Just local dispute. No, no, and they're going to court to resolve it. you got to right. remember yeah. the key word there. It's not, he doesn't even claim the we part even right. then. He says they. He says they. Oh, that's going. right. He did say they. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're going to court to resolve it. Yeah. But uh, what this is really about, folks, and this is something that I, I wrote an article on earlier this week uh, called Why Do We Have Potholes and Palm Trees on I-4? <laughs> What it's a good article, actually. It is a really good article. <laughs> Adrian Wiley, 1787network.com, <laughs> talks about potholes and palm trees. Well, it, They're going to kill you. A lot of times, <laughs> we look around and see absolutely ridiculous things that our government is doing. And we think, oh, well, that's just a stupid thing. But really, the reality is, most of the time, when you see the government doing something stupid, it's part of a bigger picture of mm -hmm. corruption, transfer of wealth transfer of power and that's exactly 
what is happening in Coffee Pot Bayou right now. This is to establish a precedent so that the state can take ownership of all blue ways yep. and then reallocate that land to p- public private partnerships under and folks, I hate to sound like a conspiratorialist, but this is what it is under Agenda 21. Right. Uh, this is just part of the plan. And your governor and your attorney general are neck deep in this thing. This is is a transfer of wealth and a restriction of property rights. And this property will end up in the hands of stakeholders of a public-private partnership, private-public partnership, however you want to say it, that will then get all the sweetheart deals on using it and be able to uh, profit off it at your expense, at the expense of the original landowner and the expense of the taxpayer. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Well, and it'll probably end up in the Florida Forever, you know, trust and all that. Right. And and we see that all the time. And and this is, when we say prop. Profiting off the landowners, these landowners have been paying taxes on it for 130 years. Well, not necessarily the ones that own it now, but the, the title the has the title has right. been in private ownership for that period of time. Right. Before Florida we was land. even a state, right. yeah. they had legal deed to this property. So they're going to say, well, before you owned it, we owned it. But we've been taking your tax dollars and everyone else's tax dollars for 130 years on it. Right. I mean, is there going to be like a refund check for those 130 years? No. As a matter of fact, they're not going to have to pay for the land. Like, they're not even right, going to have to pay the guy. It. They're just going to yeah, take it. This is not even an imminent domain case where the state has to pay the property owner's fair market value. Yeah, they're trying they to They could the, very well just end up taking it, saying they, you never owned it in the first place. Well, because they're changing the definition of what that land is. Right. So they don't have to pay it. Right. Like, yeah. they don't have to take They're just trying to figure out any way that they can to get as much property as they can under any means necessary. And that's what they're doing. Right. I mean, again, and I, I, I want to make sure that we repeat this again. Republican Rick Scott, Republican Pam Bondi, Republican Steve Atwater, and whoever the fourth person is. I think it's Adam Putnam. And and Republican Adam Howdy Doody Putnam. (laughs) Um, Because that dude straight up looks like Howdy Doody, by the way. Like, if there was a real version of Howdy Doody, it'd be Adam Putnam. (laughs) Was it Adam Putnam? Is it that one? Yeah, Adam Putnam. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and it's, it's. And you can just see how rehearsed it is when, when the, you know, the governor's on the campaign trail and are even just at an event. And they're asking him about it. And he almost, like, dodges, like, oh, what did they tell me to say again? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's a local land issue. And, we're, and they're going to court to resolve it. Like, yeah, and he it's keeps so repeating rehearsed. that. Yeah, it, it's just a single talking point that he has on it. And that's all he's got. Right. You know, and either he – and here's the, the part I always question with politicians – are they oblivious are, are, or are they just bald-faced fl- liars? And I don't know in the question of uh, Rick Scott. And either way, it's a bad thing. You don't know? In this particular case, I don't know. He's a bald-faced liar. He could very well be. Or he could just be such a buffoon and controlled by others. You know, it's a possibility. I, I really don't know the answer to that question. You know what, man? You don't make that much money without being at least somewhat smart. And you don't build a business like that with being some, without being somewhat smart. This guy's in on it. Well, you know, this I, guy's been in on it for the, for as long as the day is, and he's been he's one of those guys that were paying people for a long, long time, and then got in the game. Well, here's the thing: we know from the HCA investigation where several right. people went to jail for defrauding, uh, you know, the federal government and uh, bilking uh, Medicare and Medicaid. Out of, uh, what was it, a billion dollars? A billion dollars. Yeah, a billion with a B dollars. Um, all of the people around him you know, went, were convicted. A lot of them went to jail. And he got off scot-free, no pun intended, uh, because he said, well, I didn't know anything about that. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, you you're know, smart so the, enough to set it up that way. Well, that's the question. Is this guy just, is he truly just a, a total idiot that is... Uh, you know, a, a puppet just, of those around him, or he has so or many he, people under him that he just says, "Ah, they yeah. take care of that stuff." And as long as, as long as I'm getting a big check at the end of the year, I don't care what those guys do. Yeah, is is that the scenario, or is this guy such a? I hate to use this word, talented liar and manipulator, that he can make it appear that way. 
And either way, it's bad. Oh, yeah, it's hard. You know, he's either uh, an idiot or evil. There, there's no in between. I'll take door number two, please. Yeah, well, that's what know. it is. No, no, no. I, here's the thing. I, what I, what, I, and again, you can the way you want to say it is the way you want to say it. And I understand with your campaign that you know because you're running against him. Thank God. Wait a second. <laughs> um, it's not like I'm downplaying this. I said I just said he's either an idiot or he's evil. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Being an idiot is downplaying it. He's evil. Uh, there's I, no getting around it. This is what he's doing. He's trying to utilize the law to steal people's property that they've paid for forever. Now, they could have just bought it. They could say, well, we're going to use the forever Florida funds to buy all this stuff. But instead of doing that, they're going to the courts, which they bought and paid for anyway. Well, the people that buy and pay for Rick Scott um, can make a bigger profit on the land if they uh, they get it for free. His partners, yeah. Yeah, and, and this is not anything new. This is part of a pattern. Uh, they started doing it with uh, lands in Florida that had access to freshwater springs. And they're doing it with all what they call the blue ways in Florida, which is any land with uh, access to fresh or salt water, any land with a stream or river running through right. it. They are going after all that land. Now, when they did it with the springs, guess who was the one of the big stakeholders in the public-private partnerships that ended up gaining access to that land. Hmm. Was it Nestle Wa- Waters Worldwide, or is that the name of the company? I think it's Nestle yeah, Waters. Nestle Water. Nestle Waters Something. International, Nestle yeah. Waters Worldwide. The largest bottler yep. of bottled water, bottled water on the planet. And all of a sudden, they start going after these lands with springs on them through a variety of EPA regulations, uh, uh, Florida Department of Environmental right. Protection regulations, and chasing off the landowners, buying out their land, basically making it impossible for them to sell it at market value. And then the next thing you know, Nestle Waters has access to these springs. And they're pulling out you know, millions of, of you know, gallons per day from well, these springs. And they're That's how it, it works. It's so corrupt. And they're selling it as environmental, environmental protection. protection. Yes. Well, we need to protect these things so that companies don't come in and abuse it. And what they do is let a company come in and abuse it. Yeah. But they just get a cut off of it, though. That's the thing. Right. Look, the, and let's make sure that we get something else clear in case there's any, any listeners who are um, from the left, I guess you could say, or, or an environmentalist. We can go right. with environmentalist. I'll give you, a, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to give you a couple multiple choice answers, and we'll see which one that you pick. Who is the largest polluter in the country? Is it A, corporations, B, uh, Jimmy Buffett, oh. <laughs> I'm going to give you one gimme, or C, the federal government, or D, the state government? I'm waiting. Doom, doom. I, I already know the answer. Should I not chime in? Uh, no, no. Mr. Wiley, what is the answer? Uh, the answer is uh, B, Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that Jimmy son Buffett. of a bitch. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. No, it's not He's Jimmy. leaving pop tops all over the beaches. I blew out my flip-flop on it, damn oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you gave me a margarita, though. All right. No, no, no. It's actually the government. It's actually the federal government the is federal the largest government. polluter. Hey, look. When they get caught, what do they do? We and we change know the all well yeah. about the change the law. Immune no, themselves. No, 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 no. Well, not just that though. Remember Bob Burton. Oh yeah. Bob Burton found all that stuff out, and what did they do? They went after Bob like you ain't ever seen it. Now they finally had to back all off of Bob, and everything's been everything has been um, um, thrown out. Yeah. So they you know they threw everything out at that point, but they did that to intimidate him and to break him. Right. And they almost did. Well, they've they've devastated uh, him and Kathy financially. Yeah, yeah. you know uh, they uh, they raided the uh, raided his house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, dragged Kathy out of the shower at gunpoint, guys in masks, and his crime was recording a conversation that was being recorded. Yeah, yeah, recording a conversation with the chief of staff of Florida Senator Charlie Dean. Yeah, about illegal activities that the state was engaged in. So Bob Burton, here's a whistleblower, kind of like Snowden, example. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do they do? They turn him into the enemy. And he was exposing exactly the same type of corruption that we're talking about. And that's what goes on here in the state of Florida, folks. And that's why I am running for governor to put an end to this 
and to hold those people responsible for it accountable and jail them where necessary. Political advertisement paid for and approved by Adrian Wiley, <laughs> yeah, that's the true, candidate for governor. Um, I think after every time you say that, you need to cut in with, I'm Adrian Wiley and I approve this message. <laughs> that's true. Actually, you know, I, I might actually need to say that. I, I'm Adrian Wiley and I approve this message. Yeah. Paid for by Wiley for governor. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. 